In this lesson, we're going to be looking at ratios and proportions, and more specifically, we're going to take a look at using cross multiplication to solve equations. But let's start with a ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. And there are three different ways that you can see these often written. You might say, you might see 7 to 5. That would be like a baseball score. You might also see something written like this with a colon, or like this, looking like a fraction. These are all ways to represent ratios. Now, these are with numbers, but algebraically, you might see it A to B or A to B, or A over B. These are three ways to represent ratios. Now, when you set two ratios equal to each other, for instance, A over B is equal to C over D, this is a proportion. A proportion, so proportions set two ratios equal to each other. So there's the difference between a ratio. A ratio is just a single compare or a single set of numbers, whereas a proportion sets two ratios equal to each other. Now what you can do when you've got a proportion is you can use cross multiplication. you can use cross multiplication to find missing values. But let's look at cross multiplication first. Let's say that I gave you the fractions 3 over 7 is equal to 6 over 14. And let's look at what cross multiplication does here. Cross multiplication takes the extremes, what I like to call the lower left-hand corner and the upper right-hand corner, multiplied by the upper left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner. So if you look at this, what this becomes is 3 times 14 is equal to 7 times 6. Well, what is 3 times 14? If you do that quickly in your head, you get 42. And what is 7 times 6? Well, that's also 42. And this doesn't work just for this particular problem. This is, this is always the case when you're using cross multiplication. A lot of students, however, forget that when they're doing the extremes, the upper left times the lower right, they forget to put in the equal sign and then do the lower left times the upper right. Now let's look at that in an algebraic statement. If I went back to my A over B is equal to C over D, and I did cross multiplication, that would be A times D is equal to B times C. Now how do you use this in a problem? Let's take a look at an example. Let's do X over 8 is equal to 5 over 6. And we're going to use cross multiplication to figure out what X is. So I can go X times 6, so that gives me 6X is equal to 8 times 5. But we can simplify the 8 times 5, and I get 6x is equal to 40. Then if this is 6 times x, so the opposite would be to divide both sides by 6. And I'll continue this problem up here. You see that the 6s, 1s in the numerator, 1s in the denominator, those cancel out. And I'm left with x equals 40 over 6. And you have a couple ways to reduce this down. I think I would start by noticing that 40 and 6 are both divisible by 2, so I could rewrite that fraction as 20 over 3. 3 will go into 26 times with a remainder of 2. So x is equal to 6 and 2 thirds. Let's take a look at another example.
let's use y over 12 is equal to 4 over 7. And we'll multiply the extremes. Uh, 7 times y, or y times 7 is 7y, equals, and then 12 times 4, 12 times 4. And that gives me 7y is equal to 48. Now this is 7y or 7 times y. The opposite operation is to divide by 7. I have 7 over 7. Those cancel, leaving me with y. So I'll continue this up here. y is equal to 48 over 7. And then you can simplify it. 7 will go into 48 six times with the remainder of 6. So y is equal to 6 and 6 sevenths. Now here's another one. What I'm going to do in this problem so I'm going to move the location of the variable and show you it still works. Let's say I had 18 over 50 is equal to m over 15. Now, I think before I start this problem, what I would do before I did anything is notice that 18 and 50 are both divisible by 2. So if I can, I'm going to reduce my fractions and reduce the numbers I have to work with. 18 divided by 2 is 9, 50 divided by 2 is 25, and this equals m over 15. Well, now you can go ahead and continue working this problem. You have 9 times 15 is equal to 25 times m, or 25m. You can see in this case, the variable actually jumped to the other side. Well, let's see if we can finish this up. 9 times 5 is 45, and if I carry the 4, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13. So that's 135 is equal to 25m. Now, 25m is 25 divided, or sorry, 25 times m. So the opposite would be to divide both sides by 25. 25s cancel. I'm left with m. I'll continue this up here. 135 over 25 is equal to m. Now, do you notice that these are both divisible by something? Did you notice they're both divisible by 5? Okay, well, 5 will go into 135. That's 27 over 5 equals m. 135 divided by 5 is 27, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, 5 will go into 27 five times with remainder of 2. So my answer is 5 and 2 fifths equals m, or m equals 5 and 2 fifths. Now we can use ratios, proportions, and cross multiplication to solve problems like you see here. If my car goes 35 miles on one gallon of gas, how far will it go on 2.5 gallons? What I like to do in these problems is I actually like to write the ratio that I'm going to be comparing. So for instance, I'm going to be looking at miles over gallons. And the reason I write it is so that I don't get things mixed up and start putting gallons over miles and miles over gallons. It'll lead to a problem. Well, what this gives me is I know from the problem that I get 35 miles for one gallon. So that's 35 miles for one gallon. Notice that it's 35 in the numerator because miles is in the numerator. It's one gallon because gallons are in the denominator. And I'm going to set that equal to what I'm trying to solve, which is how far will it go? Well, how far? That's We're going to use x, because I don't know. And then 2.5 gallons goes in the bottom. So everything in the numerator relates to miles, and everything in the denominator relates to the number of gallons. And now I can use cross multiplication to solve this problem. I have 1 times x, or 1x is equal to 
35 times 2.5. So 35 times 2.5. Well, 1 times x is just x. And 35 times 2.5 is 87.5. But remember, this actually means something in this problem. So I'm not just going to leave it as x equals 87.5. I'm actually going to write 87.5 miles. Because the question was, how far will it go on 2.5 gallons? And that's my answer. Okay, now that we have the basic idea on using cross multiplication to solve some problems, let's take a look at something a little more complicated. In this problem, you'll see that we just don't have a standalone x. We have an x plus 4. We also have another variable, x, x and minus 2. So this is a little more complicated than what you've seen so far. But the important thing here is that the process is the same. We have a fraction equal to a fraction. And any time we have a fraction equal to a fraction, we can use cross multiplication to solve it. So let's start by doing x plus 4 times 7. So I'm going to go 7 times x plus 4. Notice the parentheses, because the 7 is being multiplied by the entire quantity, x plus 4. Then put down an equal sign. Now I've got 5 times x minus 2, or 5 times x minus 2. And again, notice it's, I've got a set of parentheses, because I'm multiplying the 5 times the entire quantity of x minus 2. Now, pretty obvious what you're going to do here is you're going to distribute the 7. So I've got 7 times x, or 7x, plus 7 times 4 is equal to, and now distribute the 5. You've got 5 times x, or 5x, minus, don't forget the minus, always watch out for those, 5 times 2, 5 times 2. Now we've got 7 times 4 and 5 times 2, we can simplify those. So I've got 7x plus 28 is equal to 5x minus 10. Now, hopefully you remember our videos when we solved with variables on both sides of the equal sign. I like to do it so that after I've started my first step, I have a positive coefficient on my x term. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And I'll explain that positive coefficient thing when I get done with this step. 7x minus 5x is 2x. Bring down the plus 28 equals 5x minus 5x. Those cancel, and I'm going to bring down a negative 10. Don't forget the negative. Now, this is what I meant. When I subtracted 5x from 7x, I ended up with a positive 2x. So that's a positive coefficient on the x term. If I had subtracted 7x from both sides, I would have had a negative 2x over on this side. And I don't necessarily want to have to deal with keeping track of that negative. Well, now we've got this. So I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides. 2x plus 28 minus 28. Well, those two things cancel out. 28 minus 28 cancels. So I have 2x is equal to negative 10 minus 28 is a negative 38. 2x, or 2 times x, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'll divide both sides. We have a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. Those cancel. Leaves me with x is equal to negative 38 divided by 2 is negative 19. There's my answer. Now, I'm leaving it up to you to check it by plugging that number back into the original equation. Let's take a look at another problem. Fairly similar. This problem is x plus 2 over 14 is equal to x over 10. And again, it's similar to the last one in that there are x terms on both sides, and they are what we call binomials. That is, it's not just x, it's x plus 4, x minus 2. And down here we have x plus 2. But the process remains the same. I'm going to have 14 times x. 
So that's 14x is equal to 10 times x plus 2, so that's 10 times x plus 2. Again, watch the parentheses because I'm multiplying 10 by the entire quantity. I'm going to distribute the 10. So I've got 14x equals 10x plus 20. 10 times 2 is 20. I'm going to move this 10x over, so I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. 14x take away 10x is 4x equals, now 10x minus 10x, those cancel, and I have a plus 20. 4x is 4 times x, so the opposite would be to divide by 4. The 4's cancel, I'm left with x equals, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. Again, I leave it to you to check your answers.